Animal domestication in Africa. There's uh, many uh, tapes, uh, videos, and books that always claim that animal domestication originated in North Africa, really the Levant. But the most interesting thing is this, although they always say that animal domestication, cattle domestication, horse domestication, etc., originated in the Levant, they never uh, name when this, uh, this uh, domestication occurred or tell you uh, what was the location where they found these ancient remains. Although we know very little about when dom animal domestication began in the Levant, the Middle East, whatever you want to call it, we do know much more about uh, the domestication of uh, cattle and uh, sheep and other animals in Africa. The Paleo-African hunters quickly learned the habit of wild sheep and goats. As a result of this hunting experience and the shock of the short arid period after 8500 BC, Paleo-Africans began to domesticate goats and sheep to ensure a reliable source of food. By 6,000 years before the present, the inhabitants of Tadrat Akakis were reliant on sheep and goats. The first domesticated goats came from North Africa. This was the screwhorn goat coming to Algeria, where it may have been deposited in Neolithic times. We certainly see goat sheep domestication moving eastward, from Tadrat, Akakis, to Tassili and Ajir, Mali, Niger, and uh, finally the Sudan. Barker has argued that sheep and goats increased in importance over cattle because of their adaptation to desertication. In other words, as the air became more uh, prominent in the Sahara, people may have, in a sense, uh, wanted to uh, domesticate cattle along with goats. The linguistic evidence indicates that Ovica Prids were domesticated before the Proto-Saharan people migrated out of the Sahara into the Nile Valley, Europe, and Asia. As a result, we have proto-terms for sheep going back to Proto-Saharan times. In the Eastern Sahara, it would appear that Ovica Pid husbandry preceded cattle domestication because cattle were maladapted to rocky lands. This is in sharp contrast to the Western Sahara, where ca cattle was the mainstay domesticate for sedentary pastoral economies. Much of the evidence relating to this pastoral way of life comes from the discovery of cattle bones at excavated sites in the Sahara dating between 11,000 to 2,000 BC, and the rock drawings of cattle in the Western Saharan sites such as Erg, Erg and Sakane, the Tawadani Basin of northern Mele. All of these sites attest to cattle husbandry between 6,000 and 5,000 BP. The Ovica period husbandry, on the other hand, began in this area between 5,000 to 3,000 BP. Cattle pastoral people began to settle dot to sheet and Karkarish in that between 5,000 to 3,500 BP. These agro-pastoral people belonged to the Proto-Saharan civilization. The Proto-Saharans spoke the Dravidian, Sumerian, and Manding language. The Manding language today is spoken in West Africa. The Sumerian language was spoken in Mesopotamia. The Dravidian languages are spoken in the India or South Asia. As you can see from this figure, Although these people who lived in the Pro-Sahara live on diverse continents today, they share the name for agricultural terms, domesticated animals, terms for civilizing elements including writing, boat, and house, terms denoting social class, and geographical terms. The cognition between these terms show a common origin. The Egyptian term for sheep, ram, are jir or sir. In the terms for sheep, we find either the consonants s or z before the consonant r. The uh, vowel might be in, uh, an a or an e. This corresponds to many other African terms for sheep and ram. For example, in Egyptian, the word for our sheep was seer, zir, hulof, zair, coptic, sro, bisa. Seer, Malinki, Sara, Diola, Sarha. 
So as you can see, most of these uh, terms for cattle are very closely related. And this shows the uh, fact that they came from uh, similar origins. There's phonological contrast between the S equals Z. We, fi we find both sir and zir for sheep. Here we have a vowel after the uh, S or Z and a final uh, R consonant. The proto niger congo term for ram and sheep was probably sir or zir. The interesting fact about the antiquity of the term for ram among niger congo speakers is the fact that the same term appears in Dravidian and Sumerian. It is interesting to note that the Bantu probably did not domesticate sheep and goats as early as the Egyptians, Mandi, and Atlantic speakers. The Bantu term for, for ram or sheep was buzi or budi, mbuzi and mbudi. This uh, means that uh, they uh, probably domesticated uh, sheep uh, somewhat uh, later than uh, the uh, rest of the Niger Congo speakers. In the Eastern Sahara, it would appear that Ovika period husbandry pursued the cattle domestication because, ma because cattle were maladapted to uh, rocky lands. During the Aqualithic period, due to abundant fertility in the Sahara, many people herded cattle. At Napta Playa, located on the shoreline of a lake, there have been found cattle, 11,000 year old cattle bur burials. A center of cattle worship was Napta. And Napta archaeologists have found the oldest megalithic site dating to 6000 to 6500 BC, which served as both a temple and calendar. This site was found by J. Mac, McKim Melville of the University of Colorado at Boulder and Fred Windorf of Southern Methodist University. The zebu or hump cattle are found in many parts of Africa. The oldest faunal remains of the Bas Indicus come from Kenya and date to the first millennium BC. The recent evidence that box, both indicus, hump cattle may have originated in East Africa suggests that this type of cattle may have first been situated in Africa and then taken to Asia by the Proto-Saharans. This view is supported by the fact that the advent of the box indicus cattle in Egypt corresponds to the migration of the Sea People into the Nile Valley. The uh, Sumerians and uh, Dravidians all were Kushites, and they uh, kind of belonged to the uh, Sigru people. The Sigru people came from the Fertile African Crescent. Augustine Hall has made it clear that pastoralism was the first form of food production developed by post-Paleolithic groups in the Sahara. There are corresponding terms for cattle in African language. For example, in Egyptian, the term for, uh, for cattle or cow was nag, azir, na, slinki, na, Sanufu, Nu, Sar, Mang, Ang, Mendi, Nika, Hausa, Nagi, Duala, Bingo. As you can see, all of these terms are very similar. The correspondence between the African terms for cattle support the archaeological evidence for the early domestication of cattle in the fertile African crescent, not in the Middle East, but in Africa. This is where cattle were domesticated. They weren't. They didn't come from the Middle East because uh, up to now, and, and maybe I'll be proven wrong tomorrow, but up to now I haven't seen any uh, evidence. They haven't even mentioned any site where they found any ancient uh, domesticated animals like cattle, sheep, or what have you. The oldest written evidence from Africa comes from the Egyptian language. The terms for cow in the Egyptians are ng, ng, and nag. In African languages, we find either the consonant M before the consonant G, e.g., M, and a vowel in between, or a nasal consonant M before the vowels I, Y, or A, for example, N plus A, Na, or N plus I, A, Nia. Much of the evidence relating to this pastoral life comes from the discovery of cattle bones of excavating sites in the Sahara, dating between 7,200 B.C and the rock drawings of cattle. In the West Sahara sites such as Eric Sagan, in summary, the Niger Congo speakers formerly lived in the highland regions of the Fezan and Hagar until after 4000 BC. Originally hunter-gatherers, the proto niger Congo people developed an agro-pastoral economy, which includes the cultivation of millet and the domestication of cattle and sheep. These uh, Niger Congo people 
are basically known in history as the Kushites. Cattle domestication did not, I repeat, did not come from the Levant. Cattle domestication was and did take place in Africa.